So a tint is when you add, uh, you sort of add white um, to a color, which lightens it, but it also tends to kind of open the color up to a certain extent. When we squeeze a pure paint out of the tube, or even some of these mixtures, um, we can't quite see what type of purple or what type of um, blue that we're, we're, we're sort of working with and looking at. So we need to create tints to, to have a better idea of that. So I'll start with my yellow tints because I've already got my yellow mixture up here. Um, but basically, you just take your the mixture that you're using, add a bit of white to it, and paint it on. And you're just looking for something that shifts to a lighter tone, a lighter value. So adding white is just going to lighten the value of that mixture. And about that much of a shift is pretty good for a, a tint. So then if I need to make a tint of the um, mixture that's more yellow, I'd add a bit more yellow, which might then darken it. So I then, then need to take a little bit more white, add white to that more yellow mixture, paint that tint on. And then I can add a bit more red on the other side. Add a bit of white to that. And that's going to make my red orange tint. And then I also need to add my pure um, tint, so a tint of that pure yellow. Um, I want to clean my brush off or have a reasonably clean brush for this stage. Then just take, grab a little bit of yellow. Don't mix it with anything apart from white, so you just add a little bit of white. What you're aiming for ideally is that all of these tints feel feels as though they're a reasonably similar value. So value being how light or how dark something is. So we've got hue as an idea now. So what color is it? And then value is how light or how dark is it? That, that color. When we add white to something, we just kind of inherently make it more, um, more light, which has some other consequences, but we'll be talking a little bit more about that. Oh, we maybe get into it now, actually. So one consequence of add, adding uh, white to these paints is, although it lightens their value, um, it also makes them grayer, so like less intense, less saturated as a color. So the pure versions of all these colors look, um, look more saturated than these tints that we're making. So by adding white, we're making the tints less strong um, or less saturated, I should say. Um, in painting, that's often referred to as chroma. So chroma and saturation are sort of similar things, but that's how pure the color is. So whether it's moving towards um, being a gray or moving towards being a pure version of the color. Um, we'll learn a bit more about that as we progress. So I've got those yellow mixtures in now. Um, so just clean my brush off again and do the tint for Venetian red. So just add a little bit of white to open it up. 
and that gives us our tints between yellow and red. And you can just carry on working around the circle in the same way. If you find that your palette starts to get a bit sort of uh, cluttered with paint, you can just take a bit, a bit of mineral spirits or your medium mixture, some kitchen roll, and just wipe it back. Um, because we're doing a lot of kind of complex, not complex, um, a lot of specific mixtures of specific colors. At this stage, you want to keep your palette reasonably clean. Um, when we move into doing the sphere, we're going to be using mostly muddier colors. Um, so you won't need to clean your palette as much. It's just this stage. So I'm going to carry on working around um, the circle, um, this inner circle, making tints, just roughly going over my, my process as I'm working. But you guys can kind of start catching up and, and watch me as watch and work along um, as I'm as I'm painting. Because it's fairly, I mean, these stages, once you kind of get the idea of one, you can repeat it, which is the idea. Um, partially, it's a way of learning just general sort of handling oil paint and to it's sort of a nice um, sort of lead into painting, not as demanding as painting a portrait or something like that or a landscape. Um, so you can get a bit more familiar with how it feels to paint in oils. But also, this is actually a very useful little exercise that you can use for any set of paints that you're working with. Um, because what we're going to learn from this is what the extent is of color mixtures that are possible within this set of paints. So whenever you establish a palette, you choose your colors. Um, you create limitations. So there are going to be limitations in this palette. Um, you can sort of already start to see some emerging. We can't get a really bright light um, purple with this palette, um, which we'll see as we mix when I do these mixtures. Um, we can't get a very strong orange. It's kind of a fairly muddyish orange. We can get quite a bright green, so that ultramarine to the yellow um, as green transitions go quite bright. If you've got different paints to me, you'll find you'll get a slight variation in what's possible with your palette. Um, but from those possibilities, we can then start to kind of map when we start working on the sphere, what, what we can possibly do, how we can paint our sphere as we're painting it. Um, so these, these color exercises, they're sort of, they're called triad wheels, um, triadic color wheels. Um, you can make a uh, quadratic, I think. So you have sort of four colors, you can do five colors and it, that can open up more possibilities in terms of color. Um, but it, it's useful to kind of understand the limitations of the colors that you're working with and what happens when you mix them as well. Um, so when you're starting painting it, it's good to use limited palettes um, like this because you can learn a lot about the individual color mixtures and what's possible with those mixtures. Very often when you start painting, you get given these, um, you get these painting sets that have loads of different paints in them, um, but it just gets quite confusing and can be a bit sort of overwhelming, I think. Um, so it's better to kind of work with a limited number of um, proper artist quality paints um, and learn about the, the properties of those paints. And that's why these paints are all sort of selected to be reasonably affordable. So they're good quality paints on, on the list, but um, they're all series one, so they're not too expensive. So particularly adding uh, sort of or tinting these these mixtures of purples 
helps a lot to kind of see what the purples are. So when they were much darker, um, it's difficult. I mean, it's not necessarily always perfect in the video reproduction, but even in real life, it's hard for me to see the exact difference between these four colors. They're all quite dark. Um, they all sort of merge together to a certain extent um, when I look at them, but adding a little bit of white to them opens them up a bit and I can kind of see what the, the qualities are of those hues. So I have a better idea of what's going on with them. So that's it for those in-between mixtures. I'm just going to clean my brush a bit and do a pure ultramarine tint. And then finally, I'm going to do my, uh, my green tints. So yellow to blue. So I placed my initial mixture there, um, but I would actually say that having placed it in that sort of yellow green space, I realized it's, it's not, um, not yellow enough. So I've shifted it up to the, the second place and I'll mix a, a more yellow version. Yeah, it's a bit better. Might also, I'll just add some yellow directly painted on. Not too much. And then just about there, just need my, my blue light blue green or my blue green tint. So it's not too bad, but it's probably not, not blue enough. So add a little bit more blue into it. Adding the blue is going to darken it a bit. So I'll probably need to add blue, but then also add a bit of white. Make sure I keep the value the same. Yeah, and that's a bit better. Maybe just a tad bit more blue. Yeah, that. So that's all my, my tints placed or mixed in place now. The final stage is to create a kind of like a mid gray out of all of these paints. So combining a um, a red with a green is going to neutralize or a blue with an orange. Um, what we're just going to do is sort of feel around between all of the paints that we have on our palette to create a gray. So you don't have to worry about keeping things as clean now because we're going to be working a lot more with, with grays 
rather than um, specific bright colors, and which is what we're going to be sort of transitioning into. So it's reasonably good timing. We're about halfway through the session. Um, so you're going to take, you can just start with whatever you've got in your palette and you can mix sort of them together, try to create an average of everything, kind of mix it. And essentially you're making a muddy color. So very often when people struggle with oil paints, cause they're sort of mixing up muddy colors or they're not allowing certain things to be pure. Um, we're actually aiming for a muddy color here. So what you need to do is you mix up a color. Um, this color I've mixed up shifts to purple, which you can probably see. So if it's too purple, looking at my wheel, I probably need a little bit more yellow mixed into it in order to compete with that purpleness. If it goes to yellow and then maybe starts to kind of shift um, green, control over what colors you're mixing so that you know sort of when you're mixing a specific orange or a specific mauve color or purple or green and a bit of a sense of how colors shift when you add white to them so you can see that these colors the tints they all shift a bit grayer um, they mostly feel grayer I mean the light blue probably in the video actually feels quite high chroma still but that's Partially because the blue is such a dark value, it's hard to see how high chroma it is. When we add white to it, we become more aware of its specific uh, chroma, so how saturated it is as a, as a pure color. And then in the center, we've mixed our, our gray, very low chroma mixture. So I'm going to leave you to um, finish up that. So a few minutes to work on that. Check in with my, my tutor students. And then when we get back, um, we'll be working on the sphere. If you finished yours and you're happy with it, um, just kind of clean everything up, clean off your, your palette and your brushes ready to work on the sphere, but I'll, I'll be back soon. So we can start working on our sphere now, um, using what we've sort of learned through the color wheel or we'll be applying, um, what we've been learning with the color wheel. Um, and what we need to do first is establish a direction of light that's going to be hitting the sphere and then the sort of shadow that's going to make on our sphere. And it's going to be, if you think of a crescent moon, um, the moon is in crescent because at a certain, certain times the light, uh, the sun is kind of angling at it in different ways. So it's either full on or we just see a sliver of the edge of the moon. Um, or we see a new moon and we're going for something that's kind of like a, a sort of a third crescent shape on this sphere 
So you can sort of just see something like that. So that starts to turn the circle into a sphere. So a little bit lower than sort of halfway and then this kind of this curved shape, that's going to be our, our shadow of the sphere. So basically the light is coming from up that direction, the top right hand corner. Um, so this part of, part of the sphere is in light. Somewhere about here is going to be the highlight on the sphere. Um, and this is going to be our shadow. So there's going to be a shadow on um, the form of the sphere. So as the sphere turns sort of away from the light, it's, at a certain point it becomes in shadow. And then there's also going to be, we'll put a little bit of a shadow on the ground as well, because we're going to, we're going to paint in the sort of background for the sphere to be sitting in. So that's going to be our ground shadow. And then behind that, pop a line in as though there's a sort of little wall, a floor and a wall behind the sphere. Um, and then that'll probably, we'll paint it up to about here. So it's sort of not quite crossing over the, um, the color wheel. <clears throat> and so what we're going to go for is this is going to be our kind of light part of the, the sphere. This is going to be the shadow of the sphere, this and this portion there. This is going to be a light gray. And this is going to be a darker gray. Just to give the impression that the light is sort of falling from above. So it's making this light ground plane on the floor. And then the plane behind the sphere is going to be in shadow. And we're going to start with that. So kind of moving back to our um, our grays that we're already painting, um, you can take maybe a fair, one of your larger brushes, if you have a reasonably large brush, um, to paint in your background, because it's going to be the biggest section. Um, and probably, so the, that tone I've mixed as my middle value um, in the center of the, the sphere. That's not too bad as my background value sort of behind the sphere. So I'll be painting that into this section behind the sphere so I can mix more of that up or try to match it. So I can take a bit of white, a bit of red, a bit of blue, a bit of yellow, maybe a bit more yellow, a bit more blue, and just keep working on it till you meet your, what feels like a good gray. Um, that's actually, what I mix is actually quite light, um, might work quite well for the, the floor plane. So I'll use that for the floor plane instead. But I'm quite happy with that as a sort of neutral gray. So you run out of that mixer, just mix up another version of it. Um, all of this is good practice for trying to match a color. So try to remember roughly the proportions that you use to achieve that gray, and then just mix it up again 
Once you've got it on the surface of the painting, you can start to adjust it. So similar to what we did with those colors. So it can be a bit easier to kind of get a feel for how that, how a color is actually working once it's in front of you, um, not on your palette anymore. Um, and you can paint like before you can sort of paint, say, I want to add a little bit more yellow into this. I'll just paint the yellow directly on, just take a little bit of it and sort of dab it over. And blend that in. Don't worry too much if your edges aren't super neat, you can kind of, we'll rework those a little bit more later. So once you're happy with your ground plane color, you can then try to mix up a darker version of that. So you want to try to keep it feeling like it's a similar gray, um, but it's just a bit darker. It doesn't have to be a huge shift. So value wise, what I've just done here is sufficient. So you can sort of see at this edge, how much darker that background tone is than the foreground, that's about enough. Um, and you want to try to match a color that you painted in an earlier stage of the painting. Um, if you know how you made it, it's a lot easier. It saves you a lot of time rather than sort of fumbling around trying to match a color. And as a general rule, the simpler your color mixtures are, the better, just because it's easier to remember a simple color mixture than a more complex color mixture, which is why reason, again, why reasonably limited palettes are useful. Certainly when you're first starting out, as you get more advanced, you can sort of incorporate more unusual uh, colors. But I recommend when you're first starting out with the oils, try to keep things as simple as possible um, and get to know those a small number of colors really well before adding new paints. You generally learn a bit better what you actually need as well, um, like what you're missing from your palette. If you're definitely missing something, it's it's always worth adding to it. But if you can achieve um, the same color with your current palette, it can often be a better idea to just stick with a simpler palette. So that's our gray background painted in. And the next thing I want you to do is mix up a dark gray shadow tone. So a shadow that's going to be on the the floor of the, the setting, basically. So you're not going to be able to use as much white um, to make it gray. So you're just going to be messing around with 
trying to balance something really neutral, something that matches those other greys. And you're just going to put it in that little sort of oval that we drew in for the, the shadow that the sphere is casting on the ground. And then if you want to make that shadow a little bit more complex, you can just, using the tip of your brush, create a sort of slightly softer edge to it. So blending that darker shadow tone into the lighter tone. Um, and if you can, try to get to feel a bit softer further away from the sphere and a bit sharper near the sphere edge. Um, it's not not vital, that's a slightly more uh, sort of advanced thing to be, to be doing. But if you can, that's great. Um, and then you also want just a slightly darker, the sort of darkest accent to be just right below the bottom of the sphere. So try to mix up a slightly darker tone. Just to paint in immediately underneath that sphere, if you can. So the shadow is a little bit lighter further out from, from the very bottom of the sphere. So that roughly gets our background mapped in. Um, and then the next thing we need to do is place the a sort of general shadow value. Um, we're going for sort of something similar to a, a flesh tone. Could be any any sort of flesh tone you like, so darker or lighter. Um, probably somewhere kind of mid range is is useful for this exercise, um, so that we're sort of operating in this sort of value range um, around the tints. But you can get a reasonably good idea from the the color wheel, what we can possibly do. So how pink we can go, how sort of yellowish the tone could be, how dark it could go. Um, there's quite a lot of variety. Um, you might need to give your, if you've got a lot of gray mixed up, give your palette a bit of a clean back, a bit of a wipe before we move into these, these other tones. Um, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be quite as clean as it did when we were doing the color mixtures. And then what we're going to be going for with these shadows is generally, because it's more of a flesh tone, it's going to be something tending towards a more kind of brownish or orangey tone and not as blue. Um, we are going to need a little bit of blue. So if I mix up a sort of orange between um, red and yellow, that's probably going to be, if I was to place it on, maybe a little bit too light as a shadow color. So to darken it, I need to add a little bit of blue. I don't want to add so much blue that it totally sort of neutralizes the color out, but just enough blue to make it feel like a darker brown. So something like that's not too bad. And initially we can just paint our shadow as one big block value. We are going to be adding a little bit of variation within the shadow. 
that's the shadow roughly placed. Um, so I'm just going to check in, let you guys carry on with that. I'm going to check in with one of my tutored students. So I'm just going to open um, the breakout room, Paula.